chapter, and I think everybody is here. Thanks to Lisa, Ralph, the staff at CTN in Ann Arbor, those of us who's host, who have hosted a regional conference, which I think just about everybody in the room has done that, knows the amount of work that goes into it. So let's give them a round of applause.
tour the station and we have a workshop. Often Latronics, who's a major sponsor here, supports our events, so we appreciate their sponsorship support. And then when we can, we meet at regional meetings. And I know if any, who's going to go to Chicago for the National Conference? I know in Pittsburgh, the last National Conference I went to two years ago, we got the Michigan chapter together for a breakfast meeting, so maybe we'll try to pull that off again. And I'll look at the conference schedule and send out an email there. So that's the main things happening in Michigan. I want to make a little plug for MCTV, and, and I'm making the plug in the sense that look at it at your own station and with your own volunteers. Uh, this past winter, I nominated our, what I call them, our team of sports volunteers. You know, you have the group of people like producing high school sports, other sports coverage. I nominated them for our Midland County Sports Hall of Fame. There's a committee that's part of the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Chamber that has a Sports Hall of Fame. They induct about five individuals each year in a team that maybe has won a state championship or was great, you know, a long time ago. And their nomination was accepted. They were inducted in the Sports Hall of Fame last month. <laughs> Specifically, I heard five gentlemen, I'll go through their names because I've been talking about a lot lately around Midland, but a guy named Bob Grant, who got our sports coverage started in the mid-80s. Uh, two of his disciples were a father and son team, Jason and Joe Harper, we used to call them ESPN2. <laughs> One of their disciples is a guy named John Walters, another guy named Jim Mallett, and then all the other volunteers who run camera, have been announcers, all those types of things, and they were recognized at a nice ceremony in May. It was great publicity for us, a big article in the paper, uh, TV coverage, uh, the Hall of Fame is moving into our minor league baseball stadium, Dow Diamond, so a plaque there. On short notice, we were able to get 30 of our volunteers together and got new shirts made, so we have that classic kind of team photo sitting in the bleachers. And my son, one of my sons who volunteers a fair amount, you know, it really struck him that I'm in a Hall of Fame now. And I, it was neat, the, the recognition uh, our volunteers received. And, you know how it is with your volunteers who do that tireless work that sometimes I think they think it's a thankless job. And what I communicate to them is, you know, our community, at least the sports community, couldn't give you a bigger thank you than putting you into a Hall of Fame. So you've got a group, a group like that. I know Dale, you have a lot of volunteers doing sports, and whether your county has a sports Hall of Fame in your area, consider making that nomination. Uh, and I'll make a key point is I didn't nominate us as a station or our staff. I nominated our volunteers. The emphasis was on them, and I explained to my staff, we'll benefit in the flow and the reflection that our volunteers received, and, and we did. We also were recognized at a city council meeting, the mayor here, a proclamation by our city council, so those same core volunteers and some others came and were recognized there. So it was nice for them to get a thank you from the community. So consider doing that in your area. I'm trying to think anything else to share. That's the main thing from uh, Michigan. Where do you want me to go next? Indiana or Ohio, Kentucky? I'll, we'll, we'll go I'll turn it over to you, Rob. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll pass around this uh, Hall of Fame thing. Take a look at it. Thank you, Rob.
contest franchise fees. Uh, one of the routes that they've got, and we had two bills go through the state house in Indiana last year. One was with the idea of eliminating franchise fees completely. The other one wanted to reduce franchise fees from the 5% down to 3% and add satellite companies into that. So there was a lot of mess going on with all of that. Uh, neither one of those bills passed, fortunately, but we did have something passed last year that is trying to set up a mechanism at the state level to track how the different municipalities spend the franchise fee money that they get. Um, the Indiana Association of Cities and Towns has been uh, tasked with developing that mechanism, and it doesn't exist yet, but it, it could prove tricky. Um, one of the things that we as the Indiana chapters have kind of started, we're trying to set up a battle guide for, for this fight against the cable companies. Um, our, our motto is, you know, franchise fees, they're not just taxes, they're rent, because the cable companies have their equipment run across public rights of way. So basically the cable companies are making money off of public land. So it's entirely fair and proper that they should be paying the franchise fees even in, set in areas where there aren't any peg access centers. Um, other than that, the Indiana chapter is coming up to elections this coming fall. We're trying to grow the chapter a little bit more again. Um, our chapter chair at the moment is Eric Mulberry, who is over in another country uh, spreading the word about access. to kind of impress upon everybody to pay attention to the legislation that's running through your states. Um, we're, we're keeping a close eye on what comes through Indiana so that, that way we don't get stuck with another bill to try to eliminate our franchise fees. Um, so I'll head over back to Rob and thank you. You've got a question? cable system, but they're bucking AT&T. Once again, as far as AT&T wants them to pay money to put their channels on the AT&T system, and they're not willing to pay that money.